and my name is Francis. I'm a data proxy. I'm here to help you producing more data. In this third installment, we'll look into how modern people struggle with the data law. And I'm having a meeting with the Data Equalities Foundation's marvelous Margaret. And I'm a data baker. You won't believe it. I had to re-record this scene. It all looked great. Then, when editing, I noticed a constant rumble from a nearby highway. And I didn't see this highway. Where was this highway? So I had to throw away the recording and find another place to record again. And look, what a marvelous place I found. Now, imagine a couple with shared data production. He works endless hours, she cares about the kids. No problem, they are married. So, they can declare shared data to the data authorities. Now, he leaves her for another woman. She takes the children, so far so classic. Doesn't apply to you because you don't have kids. Well, but I know it applies to you because you live in a shared flat because you live with your permanent partner but you aren't married. Now this client, this recently divorced woman, moves in with a bunch of friends who also happen to have children. They do this polyamorous thing but also share the responsibilities for children and for everything so basically. So the law doesn't allow them to share data because well they are not married. And I don't want to rant but how did they pass this law based on these antique notions of family? Why do I care? Of course they could synchronize the loggers, technically it's possible. And in the end, however, this would attribute data to only one of them, since synchronizing is always focused on one person and, well, not a group of people. So it all goes to single data ID. Unless, and here comes the solution, unless you are a company. So what I did for that woman and what I could do for you is setting up a company. This involves talking with lawyers and guidance through the pitfalls of the process. You disagree with me, right? You think that's over the top. When you drive your car, what do you do? You contribute data. When you interact, with your speech assistant, you train it, you make it better. Whatever you do, it takes some effort. Even if you don't realize it, because it appears as something that you wanted to do anyway. So, when you solve a capture, when you scroll your feed, or when you click away advertisement, you create data. You are a data producer. So, if it's not leisure time, it must be labor, right? You're not getting paid for this work. You are expected to do it without compensation because of the data production laws. All of us produce five terabyte of data each day. So the least thing you can do is making sure your data production gets recognized as yours. It needs a proper data ID. A company has a shared data vault, which is automated to share and deliver proof of your production to the data authority. So let me help you in setting up this company. These are my services.
I'm on my way now um, to the Data Quality Foundation. They are looking for non-fraudulent ways um, to produce data for the data poor. And I think that's a mission that I want to support. And I think it's strategically important. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to this meeting now. Yeah, um, I just had a meeting with the Data Equality Foundation. It was a really productive meeting. We were talking about um, data production, about strategies and about tactics. And I have here with me Margaret, um, who is the director of the Data Equality Foundation. Um, Margaret, how do you think the meeting went? Thank you. It was amazing. Uh, we had some heated discussions about the EF's uh, data wealth taxes and uh, how to raise visibility uh, for data minorities and marginalized groups. That sounds great. I think Margaret will really move things forward. Well, data poorness is a class issue, which you again think is an old fashioned distinction. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we shouldn't raise taxes. That's not the point here. I think we, we should raise awareness, but really not taxes. Well, I, I'm not quite sure, uh, you know, uh, since there are a lot of issues to be solved here. Um, data production law is so new. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. We need to well, talk about this again. Yeah, I think so. Okay, it was so nice to meet you. It was nice um, to meet you too. Yeah. But see you soon, see you right? Soon. I have to go. Right. Ciao. Right. Bye. So we came up with this idea of a shared data pool. Of course, that's a tricky thing. So we got to talk with uh, data lawyers and also with the data authorities, I think, if this can be realized. And another idea that we had was um, creating an advertisement campaign. So maybe there's an advertisement company out there who would be willing, pro bono, to work with us, with the Data Quality Foundation, with me. Uh, and create a campaign to raise awareness uh, for the data poor. And yeah, did I mention that Margaret is a great person? I really look forward working with her. She's, I, I haven't met a woman like this for quite a long time. And yeah, I mean, Margaret is a change maker. And I'm a data baker. So it seems my services are picking up momentum. I'm getting more and more requests. Some are serious and others are requests for voluntary work. And I interpret that as a sign of high demand. Just let me make it clear. I can't do free work for all of you. Sorry, I can't. This is a business and I want to build wealth. I am, I am for more than just data wealth. You know, I, I want the comfort of financial wealth as well. That's my goal as a data proxy. And I never did well in school. I also never did well when I had a job working for someone else. I don't do well in environments where I don't agree with the structure or the curriculum. But the minute I was in a place where I was left to my own devices, where I had agency over what I did, I thrived. Here I am building my own business. And this might come across as selfish, but then again, where were you when the data production law was introduced? Have you participated in the strikes? Have you voiced your concerns to the European Union, like the Chaos Computer Club or those advocacy groups did? I was never against data law. And I'm a little bit bucked off by those who think the data law is a problem, but seem not to get that it can be changed. Changing the law is called politics. Am I ranting again? Well, if you guys like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for one video every two weeks.